And here we have another example of how to deal with chemical reactions where we may have the limiting reagents. So here we have two reagents. We have copper oxide and it's mixed with ammonia and heated up to result in solid copper, uh, water gas or uh, water vapor I should say, and nitrogen gas. So this is a way in which we can actually extract copper metal out of copper oxide. Now we're given that we started with 180.4 grams of copper oxide and we have 46.3 grams of ammonia. Now we're going to end up with a reaction but one of those two will limit the reaction. And which one will limit the reaction? Well it will be the one with the least number of moles. Well maybe not because we haven't balanced the equation yet. Let's first balance the equation and then we'll go ahead and try to solve the problem. So let's see here we have copper here and we have copper here and it looks like uh, one copper um, atom and one copper atom means that we should have the same number in front of each of these like that. We have one oxygen and we have one oxygen there that means this should also have the same number as we have there. Okay now we still have nitrogen we have one nitrogen here and we have two nitrogens here which means we're going to need a two there so two times one nitrogen gives the same as two nitrogens here, so nitrogen is balanced. But what about the oxygen, the, uh, not the oxygen, but the hydrogen? So two times H3, that gives us a total of six hydrogens. And over here, we only have two hydrogens, which means we're going to need the number three there. This gives us six hydrogens here, but that also gives us three oxygens, which we don't have three oxygens here, we only have one. But remember that whatever goes in here must also go in here. And whatever goes in here must also go in here, which also automatically gives us three oxygens. I think we're balanced here, but let's just check it out for sure. We have three copper and three copper atoms. That's good. We have three oxygens and we have three oxygens. That's good. We have two nitrogens and two nitrogens. That's good. We have six hydrogens and we have six hydrogens. That's good. Now we have a balanced equation. So now the next step. Which of these two will be the limiting reactant or reagent. So we call this sometimes reagents, we call them reactants. Which one will be limiting? Well let's find out how many moles of the copper oxide that we have here and how many moles of the, um, of the ammonia that we have. So for that we need to know the mass of copper. So we have copper that is 63.55 grams per mole and I believe we know everything else. We have nitrogen, Hydrogen, oxygen, we know what those are. So, okay, we're ready to start. So, the number of moles of copper oxide. Well, that's equal to the mass of copper oxide, so 180.4 grams, multiplied times the number of moles divided by the number of grams. And of course, one mole is how many grams? Well, we have to add the mass of copper to the mass of oxygen for a mole. So let's do that here on the side. Mm, so we have copper. Let's do oxygen. Oxygen is 16.00 grams. So when we add the two together, we have 79.55 grams per mole. That is also per mole, of course. So one mole of copper oxide is 79.55 grams. So we put 70 79.55 grams of oh, uh, hmm, number of moles. Let's do number of moles of copper oxide. Number of grams of copper oxide. There, that's a little better. It's always nice to be clear. So we take 180.4 and divided by 79.55 and we end up with hmm, this is 2.268 moles of copper oxide. All right, so is that the limiting agent? Well, we don't know. Let's now find the number of moles of the other reactant here, which is ammonia, NH3, which is equal to the number of grams of that. We have 46.5 three grams of ammonia, so 46.3 grams uh, of ammonia times the number of moles of ammonia, CH3, divided by the number of grams of ammonia. 
And of course, this is the number of grams of ammonia, grams of CH3, and this would be the number of grams of copper oxide. Oh, uh, yeah, CH3 is not going to do it for us. We need NH3. That's right. I'm talking about a very different molecule. Ammonia is NH3, not CH3, of course. All right. So one mole is how many grams? Well, we have one nitrogen atom and we have three hydrogen atoms. So nitrogen is 12.01 grams per mole. Hydrogen, rounded off, is 1.01 grams per mole to two decimal places, but we have three of them, so three hydrogens is 3.03 grams per mole. Get rid of that, so we add one of those and three of those together, that gives us a total of 15.04 grams per mole. And that goes in here, so that would be 15.04 grams of ammonia. All right, so if we now take 46.3, 46.3, and divide it by 15.04, we get 3.078 moles of ammonia, NH3. All right, now, don't jump to conclusions yet. Your first impression would be, ah, there's less of this than there's of this, so this is the limiting reaction, but that's not necessarily for sure. We have to go back to the equation here and notice for every two moles of ammonia, we need three moles of copper. So we need one and a half times as much copper oxide than we need a uh, number of moles of ammonia. So we should have one and a half times as many of these as we do of those. And that's obviously not true. We have less of copper oxide than we have ammonia. We should have one and a half times as much. So therefore, it's not for sure. This is definitely the limiting reagent limiting the agent and so the whole reaction will stop when all of the copper oxide is used up even though there may be some ammonia left in the reaction and that's how you do that problem and again if you're not sure say whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute what did you just do well again notice that to make the reaction happen you need three moles of copper oxide for every two moles of ammonia so you need one and a half times as much so if we had 3.078 moles of ammonia, we'd need one and a half times as much, which would be a little bit more than 4.5. So 1.5 times 3.078 moles would be equal to, see, 3.078 times 1.5 equals, we would need 4.617 moles. So we need this many moles of Copper, uh, so, uh, copper oxide in order to completely cause all the reactants to be used up. This is one and a half times as many as these, but since we don't have as many, we have only this much. That means we're limited to just a fraction of that reaction and not all of the ammonia will actually react. So hopefully that helps. Okay, and that's how you do that problem.